everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rieger with you. It's Friday, Daily Ticket, Friday, September 15, 2023. Oh, we made it to the weekend, people. We made it to the weekend, and I love the Fridays in the fall the best. They're the greatest, aren't they? Because it's the buildup to college football tomorrow. And on Sunday, we get the full slate of the NFL. I will be honest, though. I don't know why people say that. I will be honest. You should be honest all the time. So I'm just going to tell you. There is one part of the fall that I actually hate. And now that I'm a married guy, I've been married for like 11 years. I should probably know that, right? And I have a child who's seven years old. The one thing about football season is it's awesome. But you also have to figure out a way to watch the games because on the weekends, it's also family time. So my wife and my child really aren't football fans. So they come to me all the time. Hey, we got a barbecue over here. We got a pool party over here. Let's go to the apple orchard. What about the cornfield maze? Let's do it all, right? And I'm like, um, what time are those events? Can we do those events at nine in the morning? How about we wake up at seven and go? No, it never works out that way. They're always at one o'clock, two o'clock. So as a football fan and a family man, I know you go through this. Please tell me how you do it in the comments section below. Not only do you want to be present with your family, but at the same time, you don't want to miss any football. So I carry the phone around a lot and I do this a lot. I mean, they know how important football is to me, but I do kind of feel guilty. But this week is perfect, guys. This week is perfect. Because if you're a Michigan, Michigan State, and of course, Lions watcher, it's a great week. Because the schedule sets up awesome for us. Yeah, there's games at 12, 1 on Saturday, tomorrow. But if you're a Michigan fan or a Michigan State fan, Michigan State plays at 5 o'clock. It's on Peacock. Big game against Washington. More on that in the comment section. I have kind of my first ever lock of the week. We'll get to that. Michigan plays at 7.30 against Bowling Green at the Big House. That's going to be a blowout, another one, be over by the second quarter. And then you got the national game, Florida and Tennessee. That's at like 8 o'clock. So you can do the family time, get in your Barca lounger by 5 o'clock, and then you can watch football. That's what I plan to do. But comment section, please, let me know. If you have a wife and a child that don't like football, How do you get away with doing nothing but watching football on the weekend? If you got a trick, I'm all ears, people. I'm all ears. But anyway, I am here today to not only welcome the weekend, but one of my things in the fall that I love to do in the morning, I love to read the predictions and the breakdowns of all the NFL games. I know it's kind of nerdy, kind of boring, right? But after reading many predictions, I just Google Lions, Seahawks. Why can the Hawks win? Why can the Lions win? I think I've come away with three massive reasons that there's no way in hell the Seahawks win this football game. I want to get to them. And when I'm giving these reasons, I got three for the Detroit Lions why they will win this football game. And then I'll give you devil's advocate. I'll give you some reasons that maybe Seattle could win in those same reasons that I'm favoring the Lions, okay? Should we get into it? Let's do it, shall we? Reason number one, Lions offense is going to get back on track. They had all of 14 points offensively in week one against Kansas City. The other touchdown came from the Brian Branch pick six. I thought the Lions offense with Ben Johnson being the OC was going to be a heck of a lot more potent than we saw in week one. Week two, it's going to get back on track. Why? Because they're playing the Seahawks. Did you happen to see what happened to the Seahawks last week? They lost 30-13 at home, the 12th man, to the Rams. The Rams are not a good team. They were undermanned. They were missing Cooper Cup. And they had two guys, Tutu Atwal and Puko Nakua. I don't know if I said that right. Those were the receivers making catches. They each had 119 yards receiving. Wild. Rams also rushed for over 100 yards. Matthew Stafford passed for 334. I mean, the Rams ran the ball and threw the ball down Seattle's throat. They were more forceful. Played the better game. 
they went on the road to the 12th man and took down Pete Carroll and company. So if the Rams did it, why the hell can't the Lions do it? Because I think when push comes to shove, at the end of the day, the Lions have a better offense than the Rams. Fair? Now, as I mentioned, Lions only got 14 points last week. Rams got 30. But if you look at what the Seahawks defense was unable to do against the Rams offense, you are licking your chops if you're a Lions fan wearing that blue ski mask that C.J. Gardner-Johnson told you to. By the way, I already returned the orange ski mask from yesterday's video. Got my seven ninety nine back. But Matthew Stafford threw the ball 38 times last week. Guess how many sacks Seattle got? Zero. Only hit Stafford twice. And Detroit's got better receivers than the Rams. I know they have Tutu Atwell and Puko Nakua, but the Lions have Amal Ross St. Brown. And he should flourish on Sunday because Seattle's corners don't travel. They stay in one spot. Watch for Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson to find the matchup. Amon Ross St. Brown versus Trey Brown. Coming out of the slot for St. Brown, lining up wide. He should dominate Trey Brown. Trey Brown last week to the Rams gave up over 70 yards on just three passes. Find that matchup. Lions should dominate. Amon Ross St. Brown has to have a ton of yards through the air. The other corner they have, Seattle, Reek Wolin, he's good. He played well last week. And then Devin Witherspoon, their first-round pick, the corner from Illinois. A lot of people thought the Lions might take him. He was close last week to playing. He might play this week. But he's a rookie. So that's all advantage to the Lions. Seattle gave up 92 yards rushing to Kyron Williams, Cam Akers, and Matthew Stafford had 12 or 13 yards himself. 92 yards. What do you think David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs are going to do? Jameer Gibbs got seven touches last week. Dan Campbell went on the radio and said, oh boy, there's going to be more. They should torch that Seattle run defense. Lions offense should get going. Jared Goff should have a big day. I expect the Lions offense to put up 30 or more. And if they don't, I'm going to be disappointed. Reason number one, the Lions win. Reason number two, the Lions win. Geno Smith, the quarterback of Seattle, is going to be in for a long day, people. Long day. Geno Smith threw for just 112 yards last week against the Rams in his own place. He was pressured over 30% of his passes. That's a really good number. He got sacked twice. He got hit seven times. They put up 13 points. That's it. That's all. Nothing. Lions defense should go to work and enjoy themselves. Detroit against Kansas City, they were all over Patrick Mahomes. They pressured Mahomes over 40% of the passes. That is an unreal number. They hit him seven times. Three of them were from Aiden Hutchinson. And do you remember how Aiden was being held by Jawan Taylor? Jawan Taylor was like lining up in slot or at fullback for Kansas City last week. It was ridiculous. The broadcast was all over it. It was illegal. He was holding Aiden Hutchinson. He was false starting like crazy. This week, that ain't going to happen. And by the way, Seattle lost both their tackles. Both their right and left tackle got injured last week against the Rams. Both guys were not going to play this week. So you are going to have Aiden Hutchinson going against the guy by the name of Jake Curhan because Charles Cross and Abraham Leakless are out. So he's not going to get held. Curhan's not going to line up offsides or at slot like we saw Taylor did last week. I predict Aiden to get two sacks on Sunday. There's no question in my mind. That Lions D line should dominate a Seattle offensive line that is missing two of their tackles. Now, to be fair, Seattle does have better receivers than Kansas City did last week. Seattle probably isn't going to drop the ball like Kadarius Toney did and Sky Moore did. They're going to be looking at DK Metcalf. He's all world. Caught a touchdown last week. Jackson Smith and Jigba. 
Remember him from Ohio State? He wasn't very good last week. Only 13 yards receiving in his first game. But you got to believe he's going to be better than that against the Lions in game two. And then they do have Tyler Lockett, who got injured last week. But he was a full participant in practice on Wednesday, so he should play. So it's better receivers that the Lions are going to go against. I would assume it's going to be Metcalf against Jerry Jacobs. Jacobs played great for the Lions, gave up just 13 yards receiving. So it's going to be a tougher test for Detroit. DK Metcalf's a stud. And I would not assume that Seattle's receivers are going to be dropping the balls like Kansas City receivers did. But still advantage Lions. Another thing that could be tough, I feel, for Detroit, though, they got to stop Kenneth Walker. Second year in a row that Kenneth is back in Michigan after leaving Michigan State. He had over 60 yards rushing against L.A. last week. Only 60 yards, not very many carries because they fell behind very quickly. If Seattle stays in this game, Detroit's going to have to find a way to stop the run. And Kenneth Walker had a great season last year. He's going to be hard to handle on Sunday, but I do believe still advantage Lions because more than anything, I expect Aiden Hutchinson and that D-line throwing Chris Houston to really get to Geno Smith. Put him on the ground several times. That's what I expect. And then number three, the number three reason why Detroit wins this football game, revenge. Let me explain because I know what you're thinking. Revenge? What about the up-down fairy? I don't know if you believe in the up-down fairy or not. Up-down fairy, if you don't know what it is, we don't know if it's real, by the way. But the up-down fairy is when a team plays like crap one week, the next week they play great. And when a team plays great one week, the next week they play like crap. Well, it just so happens the Seahawks got embarrassed last week and the Lions played well enough to win against the defending champs at Arrowhead to start the season. The Lions have read their press clippings for 10 straight days. They could be thinking to themselves, we're a damn good team. Who the hell is going to beat us? Meanwhile, Seattle, they got embarrassed. Pete Carroll, I got to believe, doesn't take well to getting embarrassed. They're going to be a hungry, motivated football team. So why would reason three be revenge? I can tell you. Because Seattle has dominated the Lions the last two years. They played once at Ford Field last year. They played once in Seattle two years ago. Lions gave up a combined 99 points. 99 points. Last year, Lions could not make Seattle punt, not even once. Seattle won 48-45. Detroit lost the game where they scored 45 points. Geno Smith was awesome. 320 in the year, two touchdowns, also ran in another touchdown. Rashard Penny rushed for 151 yards and two touchdowns. Lions could not stop anybody that day. It was embarrassing. Then go back to the game in 2021, Emerald City. Russell Wilson was still on the team. Threw for four touchdowns. Rashard Penny, 170 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Lions gave up 99 points in two years. You think they have a reason to be thinking revenge? I'd say so. Now, the good news is there's no more Rashard Penny. He now plays for Philly. He doesn't play for Seattle. So the dude that ran over 300 yards on Detroit's defense in two games, four total touchdowns, he's not going to be there to kill Detroit. But I'm not the only one that thinks Detroit has revenge on their mind. The head coach of the Lions, Dan Campbell, thinks we got revenge on our mind. So again, and I want to play this cut before I play you this cut. Yes, I understand the Lions have been off for 10 days, reading their press clipping. Everything is great. They're number six and seven in the power rankings. Life is good. Meanwhile, Seattle is just frothing at the mouth to get back at it, to get the bad taste out of their mouth. I understand all that stuff, right? But I'm thinking revenge for the last two years. And the head coach, Dan Campbell, is thinking revenge as well. Take a listen to Campbell. He joined Stoney and Jansen at 97 won the ticket this week. Do you think he's not thinking revenge? Listen to this. Let's not forget what just happened to Seattle at their home opener against the Rams team that, that um, honestly, the Rams just were physical. You know, they, out, they outplayed them. They outhit them. Uh, and that's, that's typically not the case with Seattle and, and the Rams game. And so 
um, you know, they're they're going to be um, they're going to be ready to go. They're going to be ready to compete. Uh, and so we we have to be ready now. I also told the team this, man. We we got something we're playing for too now. And uh, man, we got to put some back to back wins together. And for us, you know, I know this is not every player on this team has been here, but I have, and my coaches have, and, and there is a significant amount of guys who've been here for two years. These guys have gotten us for two years. They've really kind of rubbed their nose in it. Uh, and they're also the ones that knocked us out of the playoffs last year. And so, you know, I think we're playing for a lot. I, I, think, uh, I, I think it's time for us to do something here. You know, it, it, enough is enough. So, so that in itself, I think, is going to get us going. And let's. So there you go. Does that sound like a man that remembers the last two years against the Seattle Seahawks? I would say so. So revenge. Detroit is looking for revenge. So you add number one, that the offense should be a heck of a lot better than it was in Kansas City. Reason number two, that defense should just really get the Geno Smith. Can't let Seattle get a lot of yards on the ground. Don't let K-9 get going. And then reason number three, revenge. I think the Lions win this game going away. What do you think? Comment section. Did I convince you? Two podcasts in a row, I'm trying to convince you of something. Did I convince you? Was I successful? Lions not only win, but they cover. That place is going to be rowdy as hell. You're going to see the blue ski masks everywhere. Detroit has been waiting a long time for this, people. I think the Lions route the Seahawks. I think it's going to be ugly for Seattle. I think they fall to 0-2. And I think the Lions, for the first time in a long time, move to 2-0. Comment section below. I give you my three reasons. Lions win or lose. It's hard to figure out how the Seahawks win this game. With the injuries up front. With the defense that gets kicked around. Having to travel cross country. I got the Lions winning in a rout. What about you? Get to some comments, shall we? I love the comments. In case you're new to the podcast, I thank you for watching. The Daily Ticket, rate and review, and please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. On YouTube, of course, wherever else you get your podcast. I appreciate y'all. I really do. I'm not just saying that. But usually I read a good comment and a bad comment. Bad comment rips the shreds out of me. Shreds me. Good comment. Usually has been a question recently. And the good comment is a question again. Jeff, how badly does Washington kill MSU this week? Now, it's kind of a cool thing in Michigan because all of Seattle's coming over to Detroit and Michigan. They got Washington heading over to take on Michigan State. You got Seattle, the Seahawks, of course, playing the Lions. I remember last year. When Michigan State went to go to Washington, they got routed. They were calling it, what were they calling it? West Lansing instead of East Lansing because so many state fans went all the way over to Seattle. I wonder how many Husky fans and how many Seahawks fans we're going to see in Detroit. And it's kind of a cool weekend for them. They can watch Washington at Spartan Stadium on Saturday and Seattle at Ford Field on Sunday. But you ask, how bad will Washington smoke Michigan State? And I don't think they will. Now, I think Washington probably wins the football game. They're a 16-point favorite. I think Michigan State covers. I think you're going to see a hungry, gritty, emotional MSU team led by Harlan Barnett. Harlan Barnett is a lifelong Spartan. He played there. He's been a coach there forever. He said at the podium the other day, this is his dream. Didn't want to get the job like this with Tucker getting suspended. But this is his dream. I think everybody loves him. I expect Michigan State to come out with their hair on fire. I expect Michigan State and Noah Kim at quarterback to perform well. I don't know if I can pick Michigan State to win the game, but my lock of the week, I've never done a lock on this podcast. If you like the bet, I can tell you what I'm betting. MSU covers the 16. Maybe that doesn't seem super bold, but MSU covers the 16. I think you're going to see an MSU team that is out to prove something. And with what happened this week, their names dragged through the mud, their head coach letting them down, I think they respond and respond big. 
Not to mention, let's not forget, there were a lot of kids on this team that were on the team last year. And they went out to Washington and they got destroyed. Now, Michael Penix Jr. is amazing. I went to Lions to draft him. He's so good. And his offense is fantastic. But I'm telling you, 5 o'clock on Peacock, Michigan State makes this a game, and they cover. I really want to pick them to win. I really do, because that would be an impressive lock of the week. I don't know if I feel it, though. But Washington, like MSU did last year, they got to go over cross-country. Sure, they're reading their press clippings. They're 2-0. and but Michigan State's just been embarrassed. I do believe that Sparty covers. It's my lock of the week. If you want to maybe throw a wager down, I'm not telling you to, but I'm going to. I love gambling on football. All right. I got one more comment. Of course, this one, the bad comment. Yesterday, I put a ski mask on because CJ Gardner Johnson wants everybody to wear the blue ski masks. I was only able to get an orange ski mask, so I wore it. And I knew this would happen. Dominino 313 says, I vote for Rieger to wear a ski mask every episode now. That was the comment. Now, maybe he just liked the ski mask, but I know what he's saying. He just gets sick of listening to this face. You know, if I just had the ski mask, if I had the ski mask, I'd put it on. I got sunglasses right here. Should I put these on? Does that help you? No? Does that do anything for you? Dominino, what do you think? I knew it was going to happen. I knew people. Cover this face up. Wear that damn ski mask. So. That was a bad comment. I do get one more bad comment. Because I feel the camera angle has been a theme on this podcast. I'm new to this whole thing. I've only been doing it a couple weeks. So I don't necessarily know where to put the camera. I'm supposed to stare at it. It's supposed to be parallel with my eyes. Here, I'll take the banner off. I still don't think this is right. But I thought I got it right last podcast, which was yesterday. But 21 Golden 07, 007 says this. My God, put the camera further away. You spit on us at the one minute mark. I went back to yesterday's podcast. I went to the one minute mark on YouTube. I did not spit on you. I looked. There was no spittle anywhere. So I disagree. Anything I do, I don't understand it. I'll continue to work on it. Anyway, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy the football. We'll catch you on Monday. Keep looking over here. Here, I'll give you a little peek right here. Try to see. Oh, right there. Uh, yeah, there's my dog right there. There. All right. She's been very good this entire time. I'm very, very proud. Bounty, you want a treat now? Bounty, you want a treat? Treat? Bounty? No? Very good. Kind of like Lions fans are, because they should be 2-0 and after this weekend. Guys, enjoy the weekend. We'll catch you bright and early Monday morning. The Daily Ticket. Thanks. Bye.